Hey everyone! In our last tutorial, we talked about variables and output, and how you can create variables by giving it a type, defining its name, and then setting its value. And then you can output these variables to the user using simple message boxes. Well, in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about conditional statements, or as you might know them as, if-else statements. And these statements will really broaden your knowledge in C-sharp and give you a real grasp on how, how logic works uh, in C-sharp. And conditional statements are used in a very large variety of programming languages. I mean, they're used in pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, particularly in, in C-sharp, they're very useful, and I think you'll really learn something from them. So let's get started. We'll start by creating a new project, as always, using the Windows Forms application. And you can call it what, I, what you wish. I will call mine Tutorial 2. OK, so we've got our blank form. And once again, we've got our elements. And we're going to put in a button, two numeric up-downs, and uh, throw in a label as well. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take two separate values from these uh, numeric up-downs. And we're going to use these values to uh, basically uh, test out conditional statements, much like my last tutorial. So um, you can spice things up a bit, change the text on the button to check, change the label to something like uh, check whether the value is 5. And then resize the program, of course. You can also change the text of the program to my program. Right, so go ahead and double click on our button and we'll be taken into our familiar uh, form1.cs file where we can uh, edit the code of our form1. And as you can see, uh, we've got our button1, whenever button1 is clicked function, basically, on click function. And as we found out in the last tutorial, basically any code through here, uh, within these two brackets will be executed upon the button being clicked. So, how can we use these two um, numeric up-downs in our code? How can we reference them? Well, both of the numeric up-downs have their own name reference right here. Um, and it's used to identify uh, this this element within our code. So notice it's it's set as numeric up down right now, um, and then this one is also set as numeric up down, uh, but it's numeric up down two. So let's go ahead and whenever the button is clicked, let's create variables um, for these. That way we don't have to type out numeric up down each time. So for instance, we'll do um, decimal because we want to have decimals. Um, well, actually, a numeric up-down has to be a decimal, but that, we'll get to a de that at a different time. So, decimal, and then number 1 is equal to numeric up-down 1. And we have to take that even further. We have to use its value property. Because remember, the numeric up-down 1 element has multiple uh, properties. Value is only one of them. So, uh, let's create our number 2 now, which is going to be set to numeric up-down 2 dot value. Okay, so we have our we have our decimals now, our variables that we can now check using conditional statements, using if statements. Now, how do we do an if statement, or a conditional statement? Well, it's very simple. It's like the name would suggest. It is if, and then condition. So basically, if a condition is met, do the code that is um, between these brackets. So the condition, uh, there can be multiple conditions, and it is uh, between these two parentheses. So, for instance, for our first condition, we can say, if uh, number 1 is equal to a certain value. And in this case, we'll do 5, right? And then let's do a message box just to uh, show that that condition has been met. And the message box will pop up something like the number is 5. So, to test this out, let's just debug it and put in the number 5. And there we go, the number is 5. If you change it to something that is not 5, uh, the message box will not pop up because the condition has not been met. Um, we could do this with any operator, for instance, greater than or equal to. Let's check if equal, uh, greater or less than 5 works. So, for instance, if we do um, 3 or 2, then it'll say the number is 5. Because we didn't uh, we didn't change this. 
but you get the picture. It, it will it will pop up that value because it is less than five. I mean, zero is less than five, so it's popping up right now. Now, like I said before, we can have multiple um, conditions. So, for instance, we have to we can say that the number has to equal five, and at the same time, it also has to meet another condition. And the way you do this is you have you use the and operator. Um, it's basically two and uh, signs, and basically, it basically <laughs> I'm using that word too much. It makes it so whenever both of these conditions are met, then this message will pop up. So for a second condition, let's just say something like number two is equal to four. And let's debug it, and let's set the first one to five and the second one to four. And as you can see, it works. Now, once again, I did not change the the saying, so for instance, we'll just change it to it works, so the example makes more sense. And if you debug it and make this 5 and make that 4, then you'll get the pop-up. If you change any one of them, though, it won't work, because it, this one has to be 5, and at the same time, that one has to be 4. It can't be either or. Now, if you wanted it to be one or the other, um, you can make you can use an or operator. The or operator has two lines like this. You can find that line above the uh, backward sla or backslash symbol, just above enter. And basically, two of these means or. So that means either of these two, if either of these two conditions are met, then it will run this code. All right, so it doesn't have to be both of them. Um, it can be either five or, or the second one is four. So for instance, if I make this one five and the other one two, then it'll still work. And if I make this one four, and I make this one three, and then it still works. But if both of them are not met, then it'll never work, because at least one of them has to be met. So that's using uh, operators to enhance your um, conditional statement. But another thing I haven't mentioned yet... Uh, whoops. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet is using else. Now... Uh, right now, what we have it set up to is uh, if number one is equal to a certain thing, then uh, run a message box. But what if we wanted to do more than just that? Um, what if we wanted to put, do a message box even if it wasn't five, but a different type of message box? So, for instance, let's say else if the number is less than five. And that's number one, by the way. We're not using number two anymore. So in this case, we'll say message box and make it say the number is less than five. And we'll change this one up here to the number is five. OK. And then if it's greater than five, we could do else if number one is greater than five. However, since greater than 5 is the only possibility remaining, since we already have an equal to 5 and less than 5, we could just use else, because else essentially covers everything else. Anything that has not been specified in the conditions above, if those have not been met, then everything else will default to this one. All right, so we're going to just use else for this last one. And of course it is uh, the number is greater than 5. All right, so let's save that and debug it. And boom, um, if we put in 4, it'll say the number is less than 5, 5, number is 5, and 6, the number is greater than 5. So that is using else if, if, and else, and also using operators uh, to their maxima, maximum efficiency. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you later.